that's better. That's better. Uh, I greet you all and I'm grateful and thankful to the organizers for wonderful opportunity to be here with you. And uh, I don't think shift Shift right now. But I believe that we can be able to. Can you help me, young man? Can you bring me this small little table there? No, this one. And put it here. So let, let me be more interactive. To, I'll do my best to keep you awake. Do your best also to concentrate. Jaiza. Jaiza. And the Chakanavi and Kumanaja and Nana, who is on Dutor for how long? The new voice, the new voice. I get paid for talking, so until he takes away the microphone from my hand, I think I will not stop talking. I'll talk until the cows come home. Shall we go on our feet and stand again? Put your hand on your hand. Let's get started. Number one, work with me, then you'll be awake for the rest of the session. Yes, so now let's go to the rocks. This is the one sometime. You put your hand on your hand and say after me, this is how I think. So I think every CEO must use their heads for thinking. This thing is here is not for cosmetic use. Okay. I think you will put them on wiki. In Jibu, you can start paying the Shan and Jika. So collect correct information and use your brains for the purposes of thinking. After me, this is how I think. And I hope when you say this is how I think, you've collected information. Your mind, this is how I think, Professor. In the middle of the recite what other people are thinking. Okay. They read newspapers, they read things and things. Oh, I think, I think what we're going to do is whatever they are saying is what other people are saying. We hope that you can collect information, synthesize it, and formulate your own opinion. This is what we're letting amongst many CEOs. CEOs that can think. Many of us are in these offices and we've inherited white colonial systems, which we are now using to manage black people. It has worked, but what brought us here will not take us there. This is how I think after me. This is how I think. Put your hand on your heart and say after me, this is how I feel. This is how I feel. Every person, every manager, every CEO must have a heart. Not just a heart for profit, but a heart for people. A heart for the organization. A heart for progress. A heart for preservation. A heart for development. A heart for takeover. A heart for handover. Every CEO is not ready to leave the office. He's not ready to leave that office. Mm. You're not the best thing that has happened. And some of you have found these organizations already running. And remember, in many cases, they were doing much better before you arrived. You feel Mamokwako. Have a passion. Have a passion and a heart for what you're doing. And have an organizational passion. You must also have a passion for your own life and a passion for your own for your own family. And I'm thinking I'm standing in the feet of an elder. A powerful staff. Love yourself enough to love your family. And look after your family. And my two cents words, big doors hang on small hinges. Soft issues affect big issues. Where you sleep last night affects where you work tomorrow. What you're drinking last night affects how you behave today. So it's none of our business where you slept and what you drank. But it's now our business. When we see truly over the board, we say, "Because we need to work so that we need to know if we need to work so that we need." So we are interested in you, and as organisations, you must have an interest in the softer issues of your employees, because what they do with their extra time affects what they do with the bigger time that they employ. Big doors hang on small hinges. This is how I think. One more time. Sasha, don't have to write anything. You do not tell the person that that aura is it will become part of your software going forward. You don't need anyone to remind you. If you don't go to where data, do data come data. This is how I think, one more time. This is how I feel, one more time. And lastly, this is how I do. Let's all say together, this is how I do. A good plan, which is not executed vigorously, will collapse. And a horrible strategy implemented violently will succeed. Yeah. <laughs> horrible strategy. Horrible strategy. As soon as implement that like a violent, you know the good strategy. Why? You can go out of this game, nothing is happening to you. You can write as many programs as you want, 
Education 5.0, the manifesto, what, what. But I was never going implement. I don't want my white paper. I can't go start on my office. So it's not about thinking. Beautiful as it is. It's not about feeling. Wonderful emotional as it is. It translates to what do you do? You want to get divorced? Ask me. Tell your wife, I'll build your house. <laughs> and 15 years later, the house is still in the pipeline. <laughs> Just cut the damn pipe. Cut the damn pipe. And deliver the goods. Yeah. It's not about how long we have to wait for you to deliver what you say you must deliver. Deliver. So think about it. One, two. Feel about it. Three. Roll up your sleeves and do about it. And I think many businesses collapse between the head and the end. Strategic planning sessions, beautiful. Implementation. Okay. <laughs> then you find that we are sitting with governments and we are sitting with organizations that have wonderful, glossy pieces of paper bound in certain double colored printed papers, strategy, and shiny business cards. But what is delivered from those shiny pieces of paraphernalia and stationery is not equivalent to what is written on them. So think about it, that's your head. Feel about it, that's your heart. Do about it, that's your hand. Correct thought, correct emotion, and correct implementation. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Can I have it this way? The rest of you can sit down. This is a beautiful presentation I did and I will challenge some of you guys who want to do your master's program. Uh, this is uh, my dissertation for a leadership, uh, uh, a leadership model. A leadership? Model. A leadership model. I'll run through things. Many people see me carrying this stick and they don't know what it means. I go see the Shingo over here, Chambai. Yeah, but this is a, a thinking tool for me. I will, I will help you to understand it at the end. So I'm going to share with you seven principles that are proper leadership. That would be number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, and number seven. So I carry this stick to host quite a big library of information. So to you it's just a stick, but when they Brilliant piece of thinking too. We have to create new models of thinking. All together. Come forward, sir. Stand right next to me. Stand right there. Let's call his name for today. Leading from the front. And it was it? Come on, guys. Let's go together. Leading from the front. Leading from the front. This is the gentleman who is a leader, who is a CEO, who can see where we are going. You can help me there. Who can see where we are going as an organization? He has a vision. He has an idea of who he is, who we are, and where are we going as an organization. Every leader who calls himself a leader must be able to come to this lonely space where he sounds like a dreamer, speaking of things that they have not yet come to, as if they will come into existence. He needs to have scouted the sea if he's a captain. He should have scouted the land if he's a military general. He should have calculated the cost if he's a CEO, to know exactly what is it that will bring my organization here. Take note, a leader must get here and embarrass himself with his own dreams. Frustrate himself with his own education. Look into his bank account and business plans and see if those people, look at the chief, if those people who are all at the back there, how do you transport an organization from the vision of the leader to the vision of the organization. Give me three minutes or five minutes at most, or let's skip this. I have a lot of information for you. The bills are paid, so I won't give you half baked information. I'll go to town. Can we fly? Can we fly? Leading from there? Right. Now I like you. Look this way. Number two, come closer, madam. You come and stand right here. Let's call it leading from the center. After me? 
Living from the center. Number one, living from center. From the front. Number two, living from center. Living from the you look at it. There must be a conversation between every good CEO who has seen a vision. Turn around and look that way. That which he has seen that way. Turn around and look at him. He must be able to translate and move the information from the vision that he has to where the HR is sitting. These are the implementers of the vision. If you stay here by yourself, you become a tourist. <laughs> See a lot of things that no one is following you. But every good leader must be able to look and see it and then identify the critical mass that implements the project to make sure that it gets delivered. This is when your vision becomes their vision. By the time they're implementing it, they say, it's my idea to do this and this. Because the leader has been able to convince the employees that what he sees is now what they see. Even in the event that this one should die or move out of the picture, the one who understands the vision will go and stand here and the whole business of the organization will not collapse in the head of one leader. Dauphin are a politician. Ah, don't we are all but no one else can see it. The day the leader dies, they die with their vision. You know, you know those shops of my brothers there? The only person is going to shop the day he dies. Because no one understood how the father was working to run the business. He leaves it to the children. The first thing they do is to run to the bank and make with jobs. And they forget those stocks we bought. There were those bills to be paid. There are employees to be looked after. There's machinery to, to, and to them, how much did you give for us? And they spend it overnight and they end up in poverty. Back to position, please. Living from the front, stand where you belong. And you, Madame Cohen, stand where you belong. Right here. Let's call his name, living from the front. And while I'm saying this, I speak once, you must hear me twice. Because I'll speak to you in wisdom. I will not spare you. While I'm saying this, look at it from a personal level. When last did you leave yourself? When last did you go ahead with your life and say, what do I want to become? It was very critical when you were young. You know, for name, what about the chicken or kura? What about the chicken or kura? But immediately, chicken or kura. You must start asking yourself the same question. What do I want to be when I grow up? <laughs> because many of you are in jobs that you don't like. You are about to commit suicide, high blood pressure, ne sugar, ever quitting that. But you are there because you are being paid. At the end of the day, what is it that you really, really want to do with your life? And that is purpose. So your CEO position is not a final destination. It is a means to an end of you finding your purpose. Are you with me there? When I say what you like, you can clap your hands. They won't break. Let's go. Leading from the front and leading from the center. Tempo, please come right here. Stand with me right here. Let's call him leading from the back. One more time, leading from the? Back. Leading from the? Back. Now turn around all of you and look at Tampa. Leading from the front? Leading from the? Center. And leading from the? Back. This is where the trade unions belong. This is where the existing organizations, in every organization, you have them. So why must things not change? No, I know, but I'm not going to say, but I did not plan this. You can't undermine them because they represent the archive of the historicity and functions of organizations. They are reflective to look into the front and tell you, you may have seen this vision, but have you considered this? Have you considered this? Have you considered this? Is this possible? Is this, is this practical? Is this viable? And don't undermine their presence. And politics hates these people. And it becomes a collection of fools. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And no one can oppose them. It becomes a bunch of blind mice walking to a ditch together in comradeship, not nation building. I hate to become part of politicians where I must agree with you to get my paycheck. I must not agree with you to get a paycheck. We must agree to develop a country together. Full stop. The contract I have with you is a contract for development, not a contract for reform. 
And what you see as a leader, gathering yourself people who always agree with you, you are in your way to the funeral. Marketing manager is here, development is here, the risk managing is here, and the company is going to liquidation. And you want to guys, we are not noticing that there's hemorrhage here and money is going there. No, all these ever say I, I. All these ever say I, I. If we pay salary, I will sort it next month. I will sort it next month. Six months later, salaries are not paid. And you still cannot see you are heading in the wrong direction. But if you walk into any organization, you find Tebam Liswa right there telling you why this must not be done like this. Number one, leading from the? Right. Number two, leading from? Center. Number three, leading from? Right. Where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? Who can help me go where I want to go? Who is the risk manager? What are the challenges ahead of me that I must put into consideration before I complement or implement this? Come closer to me, Mr. Risk Manager. I want you to stand somewhere here. Leading from the bottom. After me? Leading from the bottom. Number one? Leading from the bottom. Number two? Number three? This one? This is where the history of the organization sits. Before you get yourself entangled in too many financial expenditures, Find out what is the core business. What is it that really brings us here as an organization? Mm -hmm. Some organizations right now are doing photocopying and printing as if printing is part of their business, but none of their core business. But the way you take a chingo, I cannot print and photocopy in another way. And if you are not clear about the fundamental function, core businesses that you must be performing in, you will extend your services and monies into all peripheral issues at the sacrifice of the critical business. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? In the private sector, in the family, if you forget the core of what brought us together here. I want to ask this question to some people and all the supporters, including my father. Makanda Gondogi. Question number one. Number two, Sakamete, Panis of Abbey, Tia Wun. Tadena, no, no, but you got it. Ten to one alone. You are mad. Why did he does? Samu Banichi does. One of the other than another. Beautiful question. Why did I marry you? Why did you marry me? Right. Who told you I married you for one, two, three reasons? And you? Ah, she, she, she also says, I married you for one, two, three, four reasons. Am I meeting my obligations? Yes. Are you meeting my obligations? Yes. That made it survive. But our relationship is not bound to it. I made it you because I want someone to buy flowers for me. Those are extras. Those are extras. But you cannot benchmark a relationship based on Valentine flowers or based on I forgot our anniversary or I forgot what. No, no. No, they are good to have for crying out loud. But you cannot hitch the whole relationship with what can come up with the Like, really? I mean, I don't remember my own birthday. How <laughs> much more our anniversary and your birthday? I'm not, I'm not saying, if I was not one of my social phone, I'm not a Facebook. I'm not going to know my data is critical. Then your phone will remind you today. You may be running in three days from now. But I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. It's okay. We lead from the front, we know where we're going. We lead from the center, we sell the ideas to those that implement. We lead from the back, we do our risk assessment and get those that resist. We lead from the bottom. I wish I had a table, I would have put them at the bottom. This is where the archive of the material and information sits here. And every time there's a problem in the front, one of the most critical places you must come back to is right here. If you want to cut out any unnecessary expenses, be it in an organization, be it in a family, you need to come back here and find out what are the most critical, what are the good to have, what are the frivolous and extras, and what is it that we can take away with us to move the business forward. Number one, leading from there. Right. Number two, Same number three, right. number four. Right. You, Chief, I want you somewhere here. Let's call him leading from the side. Leading from the side. No department, you're not going to tell you. <laughs> what makes this 
department very nice is that they can look, I know you work here, yeah. but I put you there. These are the people who can look into an organization and make decisions without being emotionally attached to it. You give them the balance sheet, you give them everything else, they look around, they say, okay, this person is unqualified, fire him. We don't know if he's your cousin, or is your brother-in-law, or his wife, but we can see that the shrinkage here, close that department, close that department, take that money, put it there, because I'm objective. I sit here many times when I was in my pastoral corner as a counselor, husband and wife, they come to me fighting. Hey, there's not fighting in my office. And I say, hey, stop fighting in my office. I charge per hour. You cannot, you cannot fight in my office. Now I'll charge you. Go home and fight when you are done. Come back and talk. And if you know what to talk to each other here in my office, then why did you come? Then go back home and have your conversation. Maria Pano with Hokonaika. Hokonaika. Now when you got in your life, you're in our office now, not our. There is a conversation that is happening. A consultant, therefore, is more relaxed. Let him finish. When the husband is finished, madam, talk also. <laughs> okay, keep quiet. And but while I'm listening to the two of them talking, I can start to make an assessment. I'm not saying anything. But from basically sitting and listening to the two parties talking, you are able to make an assessment as to what is the problem that is happening somewhere here. And this is very proper for every leader to be able to come out of the organization once in a while, look for an independent voice away from the organization, which can assess and give you a good evaluation without emotional attachments to the relationships that are entangled in the business. Now, if you get here, we give you a name, your objective. I'll tell you. Your One more time, you are? Your the opposite? <laughs> well, my problem, other problems are difficult, difficult. Other problems are a problem to solve. Because yeah. instead of solving the problem, you have to solve the person also. <laughs> the, the problem is not the problem. The problem is the person. And before you solve the problem, you may the bigger problem move wide to a new dilemma. So the problem of our nature is the nature of our problem. She will be you. And in some certain cases, it be it in relationship, be it in business, you may want to admit, even if it is painful, that some problems we face as organizations have nothing to do with the business. We are actually dealing with you, your ego, your self inflated self importance, the me, this, me, that, in a legal go, in a legal go. You know what they don't know who will go in the day, but this, this person has become bigger than the business itself. And how do you remove him without without causing him pain? I can't be one of the church. We are doing it in the church because we are running elections and he must be removed from office. We do elections every year. And the old man comes to me after election. Why did you remove me? Because uh, the year is like the year, is, the year is finished. That was why the week later, the other comes to me, they sure. Not the same, they are not both. Leading from the front, leading from the center, leading from the back, leading from the bottom, leading from the side. Come on, sir. We are, this one is, I want you just to start walking around. Walk around. Leading from around. Nisha Fragla. One in the front. One in the center. One in the Masure. One in the underground. One in the Mamayi Nyasi. One in the consultant. But he found that his finger is on the pulse of the whole organization and they know what is happening where. Many leaders are obsessed with this chair in the front, first thing I'm going to give you this afternoon is a definition of leadership. It's not a position in an organization, 
but it is a dynamic, intelligent movement between strategic places of a business, sharing critical information and advisories, and being able to make decisions that affect the organization, fully understanding what is happening in every corner. The truck is moving, and the Lord, the Lord is the Lord is the man behind. So we lead from the front with your vision, we lead from the center with motivation, we lead from the back taking criticisms, we lead from the bottom understanding the core functions, we lead from the side being able to hear objective voices that speak to the organization. We lead around, we clean up the toilets as CEOs. We put on heads in the minds. We ask the people at the bottom, at the center, on everywhere else, what is happening where. If you have not yet had a conversation or tea with your teammate, you are a poor CEO. Because that poor little woman in your house makes your organization look good. Once in a while, go down and find out from the gardener how is business down here? The guy is standing at the gate. How are you doing at the gate? But my challenge is the gate. What's happening? You may just find that a the contract you are looking for for a business deal that you have lost. Every department becomes critical. A good leader, the Baba, don't get obsessed. We need to make them. Do you remember say make them? We don't want us to tell you. We don't want you. Do you remember we don't want you? We don't want you. We don't want to say you. But it's a problem. Hey, it's not creepy. It's not easy. It's not easy. But we want to show you. 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 And ultimately, we are going to be leading from the top. I wish I could put him on top of the roof. <laughs> now, the one on the top, with this kind of an understanding, he can only descend from the top to go back to the front with a new vision and create a new trajectory of moving leadership forward. Here's my conclusion on this section. Face that way, leading from the front. Face this way, leading from the center. Face this way, bleeding from the back, come slightly closer. Bleeding from the bottom, come closer. Bleeding from the side, come somewhere here. Bleeding from the from from, from around it, and come here, bleeding from the top. Now, if this CEO is well informed to the structure of his organization, leadership is anywhere here. Do I have a job? Who is going to write your name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you mean? Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, Structuring new models and moving towards the destiny that you want to run against that organization. Put your hands together for my team here. <laughs> you can take your seat here, <laughs> I think that's my contribution on your that's my contribution on your leadership. And I've already spoken to I've already spoken to your CEO here. That part of us coming together is not just talking. We also want to be developing material, and I've worked in the South African space quite extensively. I've consulted for international labor organization. I've worked in the construction space, constructing entrepreneur training program, RPL, recognition of prior learning, and other structures of learning, creating and writing material. It comes on second nature. It will be nice if all the presentations that we've done here could be consolidated into leadership, what, what, 2024, we have something that we can have. Next year, we do the same. At the end of five, ten years, we must have an archive of knowledge. Can I go to Dana or Mama Kouribouda? I can't go back to my topic here. She went to that school. Then we could become a learning institution. Is that fine with you? Is that how I think? 
This is how I feel. This is how I do. How would you get Now let's move over to the last but not least one. I have always been interested in what I call benchmark. How many minutes left? Flourishing. I've already moved it over into something else that I would like to call benchmarking. Benchmarking for me is something very simple. It has to do with you strategically knowing when it comes to compassing your life. Compassing your So on your notes, you can just put a big cross. One line going down, one line going across. One line coming down, one line coming across. And depending on, draw a line, doesn't go. Draw a line, doesn't go. No matter one going down, one going across. Draw a line, what do you want to line? Draw what you to and some lines actually depict the smallness of other things we can't mention for religious reasons. I draw a line, 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 I Right, the, the top, the, on the top you put north, on the top you put north, on the east you put east, you put west, and you put south. It's a compass, literally so. It's a compass. The north, east, South and West. Did you know that? Yes. Mm. Right. When it comes to this campus, this campus for me is critical. On my stick, it's represented by those uh, these four holes that I have here. So when I'm processing ideas, one issue that is critical when you are making decisions, always consider benchmarking. What must you do? Benchmarking. benchmarking. How do you do that? Before you can ask yourself the question, what am I doing here? You need to find out how. Are they doing it in the north? How are they doing it in the south? How are they doing it in the west? And how are they doing it in the in the east? So when you talk about the north, you are talking about Europe. These are the machinized people. Replace people with machines. If you are talking about the west, America, this is the me, myself, and I, the big individual of the American dream. If you are talking about the east, you are talking about Sensitivity to spirituality and everything else, holistic living. If you are talking about the South, where we are as Africans, community living together. This affects the quality of our HR, how we work and how we think. So the success of the Chinese and the Koreans is sitting in the back of the culture of work. A Chinaman goes to work not to get paid, he goes to work for pride. You killed my father. He, he, ha, ha, ha. It's built into their culture. Are you following what I'm saying? So you cannot take an American, for example, and go and make them work in China. They won't survive. Because the American thinks of me, myself, and I. Right now, many of you have been caught talking things that you don't understand. Hey, Africa is corrupt. Hey, there's nepotism. There's nepotism. Who knows that nepotism? You don't think you nepotism. During holiday, all the aunties come around with their grandchildren that are not working. Hey, we hear now that the CEO, he's a national teacher, he's a national teacher, he's a national teacher, he's a national teacher, he's a national teacher. Am I right? Am I right? You've been fooled to say there's no corruption. I'm not corruption. You know the understanding of family dynamics. I can't say much, of course, because of presidential issues, but you know the. <laughs> we have to work within a certain space of, of understanding the environment which we live in. Black text, black text to us is part of life. But you don't work for yourself. I bring up my own young sisters, pay for school fees for them. Five of them. 20 years, my life was in park. Salary is so good. I've only started doing things for myself, right? Now. So if you're supposed to look at my success story based on me, you may miss it all day. You say, what are you doing? I only managed to buy myself a piece of land uh, last month. <laughs> like, I'm still a last month. But big trees. Do you want to show the food? Oh, the flow is 45,000. You can even go to the motion. But you can leave it. And I'm making 60. Not that I've not been working on at all. Young sister, 120,000, investor of capital, this one, 90,000, my first daughter is investor, the other one, 85,000, 90,000, my budget, 252,000, right? Who do you want? And you cannot drop the ball. 
because all these things are plugged into you. Yeah. So when you look into the face of a black person, this is here in America, says, it's my mother, it's my father, it's me, myself, and I. Who is my family? No, 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 no. Uganda uri mwana kumba mukuluko atuzukuru ni mwana de lady in Kenya. How so man? How man are these people here? So the mindsets will also help you to understand the dynamics we're working. So we work with the north is machinery of our people. You go to the west is about the individual, the great I. You go to the east it is spiritual. You come to Africa it is communal. Umuntu, umuntu, gabantu, umuntu, ongena buntu, hii, to. Mbakoni, 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 So, at the end of the day, you need to understand when you are, yeah, hala, 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 So when you are benchmarking your product, you also want to find out, even your organizations that are here, it's not good enough that they're doing well in Zimbabwe. Ask yourself the question, what are they doing in South Africa? And how are they doing it there? What are they doing in Europe? And then do some research in your organization to find out how best you can also be able to improve your product services, your offerings to your organizations, and benchmark those things from the east to the north to the west. I ultimately you come back to the south. Are we okay right there? That's the whole idea on branding, essence, development, and how a good leader must brand and benchmark themselves. Because you as a leader, somebody I'm the CEO of an organization. Which organization? My organization. How are the CEOs doing? Who are doing the same job you are doing in different places? You may think you are doing well. Until you find out the husband next door, they bought his wife for her. You you tell me about Tinga Tinga Zifu. You like ah, come with me, Eli. They are killing out, but they are not killing. So before you become too proud of what you are doing, you may also want to start just benchmarking your product. And I'm saying so because Zimbabwe is moving into a new dispensation. A really good news with the lifting up of assumptions, not that of any value. We are actually doing much better during assumptions. That we were doing during uh, the simpler days that we had. How did you do know it then? I was like, I I was like, 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 I Two or three old people that are before, and there are two guys. Honestly speaking, if this was supposed to be 1985 82, calling CEOs to a meeting like this, you know what I'm talking about. 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 So, if we are moving forward, we may need to start benchmarking our products to make sure that our offering, be our products, they are. <laughs> to the next five minutes. <laughs> no, I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not this was just a illustrious introduction. Can I have slide number one, sir? Slide number one, let's move on. <laughs> no joking. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's, it's, it's fine. I want to take you through the thinking tool. Maybe the next conference, if I happen to be called, we can tell the number of people that are here. I'll be able to design at least part of the package for every leader to have a thinking tool. If you don't want to carry it with you, you can hang it in your office and have it somewhere there. It will work strategically to remind you constantly of the information I'm sharing with you. So to transform your organization, number one, you need to understand what is governance. What is it? Governance. That's number one. When I'm saying this, I want you to think from politics to family to personal life. This comes across the board. I speak once, you hear me twice, 
Give me three times, give me four times. What do you do with the information? None of my business. But first things first, governance is critical. How do you run your home? How do you run your organization? How do you run a country? How do you run a continent? Right now we are stuck with the Roman Dutch government to manage African people. We are stuck with a law that does not have the jurisdiction on the paper that it is written. We are trying to fit square holes in round holes. As if we don't have our own indigenous governance systems. And this foreign governance system, which is a marine law, on another day I'll come and lecture on that, is trying to manage the people on land. If we were the Roman and the Dutch, then all of us must have Roman and Dutch passports. Well, we start with the governance system of the West, which we don't even understand ourselves. And I feel so sometimes, Jemba, when you get into Parliament, we have section 4, subsection 6, subsection 8. In all honesty, only a few people like Jemba, Namabiti, understand that jungle that's happening there. The rest of that team, who see? You get there, I'm in South Africa. Uh, point of correction. I have on the point of order. Subsection 2, subsection 3. So, and you listen, listen, people of mature age arguing over subsection 2. You should pardon your prayer, but argue a point of correction. How many projects are you going to deliver after arguing correction of subsection 2? So at the end of the day, we are caught up in semantics of governance. We raise it much. Our traditional spaces, I love it. Those many people don't understand. The king sits and he says nothing. Mm-hmm. Everyone has spoken, everyone has been heard, in many cases, in fact, in the real royal houses, the king says nothing. Totally nothing. He comes to listen to his people talking. And after they've spoken, five or six of them go with him to the private room. So what do you think of what the people we see? They've agreed then, then go and implement what have we done, what we've spoken about. The king makes an announcement and it is implemented as if it is now his voice. But if you listen to his voice, he has represented all our voices. Now this governance system that we have on subsection two. <laughs> point of order, point of order correction will end up with the intellectual gymnastics of the educated and the poor people are left in disillusion and confusion. Number one, find out the governance system. Systems. Small corporate governance, Bonini, Luxira, Obamban, Mahonos, Barnos, Wetzel. After that, number two, agriculture. Preserve indigenous seeds, ecological intelligence. And when I'm talking about agriculture, I'm talking about if a country cannot feed itself, that country is not able to govern itself because there's politics of the stock. And in your organization, wherever you're working, remember that only work with people as long as they've eaten. <laughs> a hungry stomach knows no politics. The only thing left when people are hungry is that hungry people must, the poor must eat the rich. That's all. But if you are not aware of the issues of the stomach, which I want to call agriculture, you cannot be governing and leading people that are hungry. So every organization must be sensitive to the issues of agriculture. Not agriculture is of farming, but the culture. The culture of food production. Come on, one more time. The culture of food production. Number three, we are dealing with education and learning. You are not professor. We need to change what we call informal education and make it formal. And what we call formal must be informal. Ask me why. Because formal education, when you graduate, you have no experience. Yeah. So it's formal in books, but informal in experience. 
What is the master? I hear by your brother. Who's already years of experience? I never been They will tell me what have you been doing for the past 25 years? You were in university, or college, you have dissertations, and yet you're not experienced. Yet, what we call informal education. You learn from day to day. The day your father dies, business continues as usual. Where are the plantations for next month? Where are the goats? The fertilizer? But we are not going to mangani, food. We are not All that information is constantly available in your hands. And that's where real learning takes place. So we need to transform our educational sector. We stop taking students to school. Come on, stop taking them to school. Until they come with a problem in the community. Kumai Shangu, the Kumai community, they are not about changing who should in the community. What are the problems in the community? And after you identify the problem in the community, you come to school. And then the school will help you to look for solutions to go back and solve that problem. Atidimum, not so employment and graduation. We need someone who comes back from university with a solution, whether it be water, whether it be rocks, whether it be food, whether it be engineering, or it be computing, it be what you come back to solve a specific problem. And many of our CEOs and leaders have not worked the community. And some of us, unfortunately, we don't even know the solutions we're giving the community. Whether it's what we want to give them or it's what they want to get from us. That's how that charity will become irrelevant. Forget what people are like, oh, appetite but the diet and the health consciousness of the people is not about the product that you are selling. Education. Solve issues. 4IR. What are we doing in this industrial revolution academically that will be relevant in the next industrial revolution? Or else we are buying machineries right now. So I'm going to tell you, come here. Take a wire, take a wire, take a wire. What is the budget? The PTC, professional chair. And immediately they finish buying all those wires. Cell phones came in. You have warehouses full of copper wires. Because the leaders of those organizations could not even see that cell phones were one year away. And we're still investing in Kuchera Mafomba. Kuchera Mafomba is a phone. Part of, part of leadership is being able to see what is coming after so that the infrastructure you invest in, in the now, is relevant in the then. Number five, oh sorry, four, business and economics. That's our modus operandi of running business. And I'm glad it's not the only thing you're doing as a business. I'm putting it in context. Business and economics apply the principles of business that make business work. To, to make business decisions, not family decisions. It was it. Make business. Some of them are painful. And one of the most painful decisions sometimes is to fire your own wife in front of everybody. <laughs> For coming to work late. <laughs> Call a meeting. Sorry, my You have been excused. Go back home. We'll deal with it when we get there. But what I'm saying is serious. Because you're going to run a business like you're running a massage parlor. <laughs> you're going to end up with erections instead of directions. Hey, because that's me. That's me in my other mind. That is there. You pardon me. I do a lot of men's conferences. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a slip of the tongue. My apologies. <laughs> business and make business decisions, not, not, not romantic decisions. Number four, health, innovation, and technology. Every business that is relevant right now needs to start looking at health and technology. COVID, I hope you learned something from COVID. I hope you learned something from COVID. And I know that I'm office be health wise. Health is wealth. Without good health, even the richest man is poor. One the white is a one the often is a knacker. Drive a window, but the wasa bar, maturity the appeal new way. Let's make sure that wherever you are, you are health conscious. You are aware. Because if the person is sick, that person is a liability to the organization. So the person's health is of key importance. Because they can only give you good service as long as they are healthy. Mm -hmm. And any organization that does not understand health principles, you are breeding patients. 
and you pay for their health bills. Waste of all members. Ndara sugar pan, diabetes pan, me high blood pressure. Mumpa three big in the one. I wait to close that road. You will have to pay buy for the coffee. No, was on duty. But then you can't come around and say I have nothing to do with it. But he was on duty. So the person's health, the organizational health, the family health, the national health, I'm speaking on levels now, needs to be on constant guard. Anyone who lives amongst us. Innovation, part of that also. Creative stuff. Gadrayama Zumbani, making new juices, making new rubbing stuff. Our technology and IP, knowledge systems. We need to go back to our indigenous knowledge systems and package those things into intellectual property and sell them to the world. The rich, richest billionaires in the world that don't appear on folks are those who own intellectual property. IP. We say in the term. IP. Well now, Vasave, my IP are that you are nothing. Huh? When I do it, John. IP. My design ain't you are it's about to work with you. I don't know what it's in the my W, to my W, to my Tito, with a Tito, to YT, what work. This woman in one day where they designed the BMW worth millions. Using some of those, all those things are intellectual property. Mushangwasha, which I'm in here. You check it out. Someone needs to go there and make no toothpaste out of those things. Yeah. Which is fluoride free in the halitosis. GG fighters plus cleaning up of teeth and everything else. And here you are, Mr. Kuruwanga is a pharmacologist who you, 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 you galas on. We took a big exam, put a big close up. As if we have nothing, as if we started brushing our teeth when the white people came here. <laughs> so there's lots of money in innovation, creating new products. So any organization also starts looking and saying, are we selling old stock? When last did you call a meeting in your organization of creative thinking? What new strategies, what new products, what innovations can we begin to sell? Mujaro Ramalan, particularly you pastors, on Major Majid. Because this thing is getting expired. I mean, we are you don't feel you know you can't play around. Mujaro Rama, you need to come up with new methods of collecting money from people. Because it's no longer relevant. In the best of because you keep on selling something that no longer works, that no longer relevant. Become innovative, even in your own organization. You have things as my whole cross bands. This is my whole cross bands, you want big bucket. This is my whole cross bands in the system we, they, 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 we are teaching people where the culture of this whole cross bands is. Yeah, these are rituals that are happening in Europe. And then they rub it with them, sex in one and then they remake this thing, this is all pagan. It is still selling hot cross but, but information is going better that this is no longer relevant. So you remember the product. And no one is available to consume it and talk there. Innovation. Let me go to the last one and I sit down. Sports and entertainment and recreation. We need to start creating new models. New models. All together. Recreation. What about one called uh, entertainment? Creating new models, make workplace happy, be creative, sports and other things must become part of learning. And I think Omar Rufu and Melissa uh, did a good job on that. I don't need to extend myself on recreation. And people that play together tend to live together much more nicely, also. And lastly, every organization, every leader must have a spiritual basis of spirituality because that's where the strength of everyone comes from. Yeah, they don't believe in God. Me Me until your house catches fire. Wait until three, four problems come knocking on your door. Very quickly, when all of us are in trouble, we tend to find our solace and support from a spiritual basis. Therefore, whether I believe in a tree, I don't care. I go to that tree often. Whether I believe in ancestors, I don't care. God them often. Whether I believe in Jesus, I don't care. God them often. But be connected to your spiritual base. Because the day when the cow down hits the fan, <laughs> you will need your basis back to the things that you did not. This is how I want you to think. This is how I want you to feel. This is how I want you to do. I've written a few books there. I was going to take an orientation of a few of them. 
Uh, unfortunately, I could not carry as many, but uh, a must read African questions, African solutions, uh, contested ground, women as estate, he who has no wife, he who he who has no land, does not have the right of reproduction, yeah? <laughs> Urine for territory, uh, spam for child reproduction, uh, shopping skills, uh, don't touch things that you don't intend to buy, and when the face is beautiful and the software is not working, hardware suffers, yeah? <laughs> so you want to be the master running a breakdown service on the highway of life, going places in the spirit, managing your spirituality, I have more than 10, 15 titles, please. If you want any of these pieces of work, uh, I only brought a few. I think the first five have already been bought by our CEO. I'll be very glad to make a pack for every one of you. Some of them are for your children. You read with them every day, a chapter a day in 21 days, and you can transform the language in your own home. And don't advertise fruits that you don't intend to sell. You're already talking them about their own fashion, you know what I'm saying? And if you break it, consider it yours. They don't have a teenage pregnancy. Brilliantly done. My kind of style of thinking. If they want us to treat them like adults, we will talk to them like adults. Yeah? So that's all I have for you, ladies and gentlemen, with those few words. I thank you.